you've probably never heard of a Primaris Lieutenant before. Hello and welcome to my review of the Space Marines Primaris Repulsor Executioner tank from Games Workshop. One of these tanks will set you back sixty pounds. You can say you can save yourself nine quid by using my affiliate link in the description below by purchasing it through Element Games, and that way you're also helping the channel out and you're allowing me to continue making this content. So the Primaris reports for Executioner. Did we really need this tank? It came out last year in the summer. I skipped it because that was the line in the sand that I drew of paying £60 for a plastic tank. It is only three sprues. It's got the two sprues from the normal Repulsor with a third additional brand new sprue and you've probably seen that yesterday in my unboxing. They've obviously swapped uh, this uh, additional sprue with the uh, kind of mini turret sprue uh, that you would normally get. Uh, with the normal repulsor uh, that has the um, sort of smaller uh, onslaught Gatling cannon and uh, you know the turret itself and other bits and bobs. I think it looks better uh, this tank has actually got a, a bigger turret and things and a, and a decent weapon and it can still carry uh, six primary space marines. Of course that's an expensive way to do that. At the advent of the new slurry of releases for Primaris, such as the Assault Intercessors and uh, new Eradicators, this Executioner is not just another metal box uh, to put your Hell Blasters in. With the release of the new units, Games Workshop have opened up its uh, usefulness. Although if you still want to go down the, the cheaper route, um, you can always bundle them in a Impulsor um, for almost a quarter of the points cost, uh, but only £15 cheaper in uh, money money terms. Anyway, what we'll do is we'll have a, a good close look at the, the miniature. I'll go through all the detail and things. Uh, we'll do a load of size comparisons. Wow. At the end of this review, you'll be saying thank you very much because uh, there are a huge uh, selection of tanks on my desk today. So I'll really uh, pop out the old size comparisons for you. And then finally we'll go through its rules and um, see why this is a very much a, a pay to win um, miniature in the, in the form of that ridiculous uh, laser destructor uh, weapon. So let's uh, have a look at the model. It comes, it's a, it's a floaty tank. It's, a, it's not a grav tank. It's a, it uses uh, repulsor plates, which is a little bit like um, grav technology in that it really does crush uh, you know, forces the, the ground down rather than um, the anti-grav uh, technology, which sort of, I want to say repulse, I shouldn't really use the word repulse, but you know what I mean. It, um, it uh, reverses the magnetic field or whatever at different altitudes and uh, that allows like land speeders and things to hover. Uh, this really sort of crushes everything down as, as it's going along. Uh, any, anyway, um, <laughs> So you, because it's a, a kind of flying tank, uh, it comes with one of these big bases and uh, one of these, um, yeah, weird uh, stand things, which means you can only have it at a level, level point. Um, it's an all right tank. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of sort of flying tanks anyway. Just give me tracks any day. There's just something about a rolling thunder and uh, yeah, we know it's the 41st millennium and uh, for many years we've been thinking, oh well, why? You know, there's, there's land speeders, there's massive battle barges and things like that, but you know, your vehicles have wheels and your vehicles have tracks and you know, one of the reasons is because uh, the technology's kind of, kind of been stagnated and um, kind of stick to what you know, uh, Mechanicus and all the other Boffins in the Imperium have, uh, for many reasons, stuck to uh, the technology they say, I want to say pretend to know, because they're all sort of praying towards it. But anyway, Belisarius comes along and he's like, no, we're going to just start creating lots of new stuff. Um, weapons, you know, propulsion units, uh, armor, uh, all kinds of things. Anyway, what you're looking at here is, well, it is a repulsor. Um, what Games Workshop have done is 
Uh, they've stuck with the heavy bolters, but they've given you this new thing here. All right, so this thing right here is all the same as the repulsor. Everything is the same as the repulsor, except for this bit here, this um, turret mounting um, plastic piece, and that covers up the side uh, you know, mini sponson. So yeah, we'll, we'll do some comparisons with repulsors in the sense that these uh, side mini uh, sponsons um, are, are no more. Um, so that's what they've done. They've also added this uh, funky iron hail stubber thing um, on the back, like a tail weapon. Uh, I think you can swap that out though. And uh, this is the big daddy. This is the brand new big daddy of of the uh, repulsor. Um, you can see that uh, both of the um, weapons there are quite quite loose because I haven't glued them in. You don't have to glue them in. If you don't glue them in, then you can swap them. Uh, I'm not really sure why you wouldn't glue the onslaught cannon in. I don't know why I haven't. Maybe I should really do that soon. But um, yeah, what you can do, my little tip, I guess, if it's not really a tip, but um, it's more of an observation, uh, design observation um is that uh yeah you can leave them unglued and then you can just swap out this weapon uh with the uh plasma incinerator um but what they've done is they've designed it pretty decently that you can just not glue those weapons in and uh yeah before you know it You're losing things already. Can I get through any review without dropping anything? Anyway, um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, so you can just sort of squish that, and then they they hold a position quite well, actually. You know, I've I've just pinched that. Um, you know, and I'm just okay. Well, yeah, even just pinching it, it. Uh, Gives you, you know, an okay firing arc, I guess. You can't really raise it that much, but, um, oh. Yeah, I mean, I suppose you could get away with fire, you know, aiming it up a little bit. And for a lot of people, that might be uh, a decent sort of trade-off. Sort of wobbly gun, I guess. Um, you know, for the ability to uh, swap it with the, uh, the plasma weapon. So the turret is actually like a big proper turret now. Um, really cool looking, way better than the tiddly little uh, repulsor turret. It's also got these uh, rear weapons, which is quite odd because they're, I say firing arc, kind of does go to the side. Um, so that's nice and they move. So it's a turret within the turret, these two little turrets. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's about it. So when the turret's facing that way, you, you've only got that kind of 90 degree firing arc, I guess, um, rear and at the side. Uh, whereas if it was mounted in the middle, then you'd, you'd have a more obtuse um, firing arc, I guess. Uh, so, but then again, you know, you've got the heavy bolters at the business end, you've got this coaxial um, uh, Gatling cannon, you've got the, the rocket pods and things. Um, so, I guess this is this vehicle that you know this ex executioner is meant to um be able to uh, engage all um attackers from kind of all angles really uh, the fact that it would be able to pivot and move its turret at the same same um same way too uh is yeah it's it's highly maneuverable and uh, is absolutely loaded to the teeth okay so uh let me just go through some spare parts then uh with the model find which baggie they're in so yeah Oop. here they all are uh, as you can see a fair, fair amount let's just uh, move you down a little bit okay so what we've got is uh, this macro plasma incinerator uh, the one that I've equipped it with right there is the heavy laser destroyer and um, if you choose the macro plasma incinerator well we'll go through the rules a, a little bit later and um, basically you're getting heavy d6 um, whereas the laser destroyer, you're only getting two shots. Uh, however, uh, it does have this Aquilin optics, um, whereby 
both of these can fire twice and uh, believe you me having almost 12 shots of strength a ap minus four is uh yeah crazy uh, likewise having four shots at strength 10 ap4 is also pretty nuts and um, so it's it's a it's so it's a high damage output uh vehicle i think it's uh definitely um worth the four primaris uh, troop um sacrifice again you know, you may want to just put six hell blasters in this thing, uh, or three eradicators. Um, it works well with three eradicators uh, now because each Gravis um, model takes up the space of two other models. Um, so yeah, having a full squad, you know, three uh, Gravis armored Marines, or even the three Blade Guard, something like that. Um, and let's not forget that Primaris have the two wounds uh, each anyway. So although you're only fit squeezing in six of them, that is the equivalent of like 12 wounds. So still, you know, from a wound damage point of view, better than a Rhino uh, with uh, 10 Space Marines. Anyway, so that's the uh, Plasma Incinerator. Um, you've also got these bits and bobs uh, like uh, boxes and crates and yeah I don't really know what that is um this little Icarus pod thing I think that's for this I'm sure it is for this uh little relic reliquary type thing uh you've got the the Primaris um you only get one Primaris popping out I don't think the repulsor you actually get a uh, a, a couple um, different ones, but yeah, he's got, uh, I want to say two heads. Yeah, helmeted version and a non-helmeted. Um, you could use them on other Primaris, I guess. Um, but this one's got a, you know, quite an extensive tubing from the helmet. And uh, it's got different uh, shoulder pauldron there. Um, different hand, different arms as well holding all specs, um, holding the, the side of the cupola, holding onto the uh, heavy stubber there. And you've also got things like this, this weird kind of wrench thing, mnemonic electronic wrench. Uh, you've got this like fuel cell thing uh, and a load of cabling. Again, up to you if you want to put these on, on there. It's quite a futuristic tank. I think kind of boxes and crates and things on a futuristic tank just don't go as well as on a you know, your, your standard um, tracked vehicle, but hey, that's just uh, my take on it. So there you go, you don't get a huge number of uh, spare parts, um, but there are some. Uh, let me show you some size comparisons then with uh, the other tanks. So um, here is the Repulsor uh, with a heavy onslaught um, Gatling cannon and with a mini onslaught uh, cannon and then a coaxial um, heavy stubber with the dual heavy bolters so you're not really missing anything from the front there um you know just to point that out uh, the executioner still has four front facing weapons and so does the repulsor it's just that the executioner has one big main weapon that you know completely trumps the uh i say main weapon of a uh, repulsor uh, and the turret is much larger to sort of compensate from that uh you know looking at the sides as i say you're missing out on the side sponsons, but you get them on the turret, and then you still get a tail weapon too. Um, so overall, same number of weapons, uh, but, but a bit more powerful. But the coaxial weapon uh, for the executioner is the main weapon on the repulsor. Here's this other variant um, that I uh, managed to get from the um, Conquest magazine. It's a nice limited edition blue. It's not limited edition, it's just the pl plastic that they used used uh, for it. Ignore the mold lines and things. Um, I didn't even uh, get rid of the mold lines for this one, but I'll, I'll definitely go through it with a fine comb and uh, sort it out before I spray it. Uh, but this one, as you can see, um, has got the, the, the last talon and um, the uh, twin link last cannon at the front it's quite strange that the last cannon i think it's got a, a 24 inches um where obviously the, the uh, last cannons at the front there have got a range of uh, 48 so you've got this kind of secondary hull mounted weapon uh which is double the range of its main weapon so yeah it looks a bit silly but i wanted to have 
it with uh, with all the last cannons as, as possible. Anyway, um, I'm meant to be doing a size comparison and things. So they are the, exactly the same size. Uh, the turret weapon, well, with the heavy laser destroyer, that, that does go um, past the, the hull of the tank. If we just take the, the turret off and we compare it, because I think this is quite a useful comparison. Um, yeah, this is what a turret sort of should be. Um, everything's bigger. The, the the back exhausts are bigger. It includes the same number of uh, communication masts, and they contain then the same number of like frag launchers and um, boxes of uh, launchers and things. Still has a pintle mounted weapon, um, and still has a coaxial weapon. It's just the the weapon on this bigger turret is is a main weapon, and it does make that look silly. I mean, this turret would look better on uh, the upcoming Gladiator tank. Uh, definitely, I think it'll be a similar kind of size uh, turret, but of course the tank there is uh, the size of, uh, of an Impulsor. Anyway, apart from the turret, that's it. The rest of it is exactly the same, um, except for the uh, you know side sponsons. So I hope those kind of size comparisons have helped. Uh, speaking of the Impulsor, it's over here, shunned away for being overly priced. <laughs> Yeah, like I say, the difference between these two is £15, and um, yeah, the, the impulse is just not worth it in my opinion. It's going to be really interesting, as I said in my sort of previews of uh, the upcoming Gladiator, and um, which shares exactly the same chassis, how much they're going to try and charge for that, whether they're going to charge just £5 more at 50 or 55 I'm leaning more towards 55 If they charge 60 for it, that is going to be absolutely incredible you know, crazy. Uh, I'd love it if they charged it the same price as the Impulsor. I really would, but I've got a feeling that it, they're going to try for, for the £50 minimum. Um, we'll see. But here's the difference. Um, they both can carry the same number. I guess uh, that the Executioner um, has, you know, four Primaris Space Marines, less room inside for the energy capacitor capacitors or the plasma bank um, cooling system or whatever um, for the main weapon that does make sense but uh, yeah there's the the impulsor um, yeah carries the same but got a bit of a uh, no. uh, got a loose uh, rocket launcher I think there mate sounds a bit uh, dangerous bit of an open top I mean it's got the spaces there um, for one two three four five and maybe the sixth one just hides in the back or holds on. I don't know, but it's definitely given me the impression there that uh, you can um, squeeze uh, six in the back uh, with the driver and then this guy, or maybe this guy is, is everything. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's the size comparison between the uh, Impulsor, if you wanted to know just how small, big the Impulsor and how small the Gladiator is going to be. It's going to be smaller than the Executioner. Okay, so um, one of my favorite parts of this uh, size comparison is uh, my comparison between legacy tanks. I'm gonna skip comparing the size of it to uh, a Predator because a Predator just doesn't have any um, troop transport capacity. So I'll compare it to a Land Raider right here. Some people put the, land, the uh, last cannons on the front, some people put them on the rear. I, I do a mixture of both. Um, but there you go. That's quite a decent one. Um, you know, bearing in mind that the Land Raider, when it first was released, was, I want to say, £30 or maybe even £35. Um, but now this is sitting at £50. Uh, so for £10 more, you're getting this Executioner. Um, come on, guys, what looks better? Clearly the Land Raider does. It's much wider. It, um, it carries more, you know, you can carry 10 Space Marines in there, but... For some reason, um, it's too claustrophobic for primary Space Marines and they just can't fit in this, uh, this Land Raider. They, they refuse to jump in, um, even though there's a very nice, large, welcoming uh, hole at the front. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's, I'd say it's wider and it is a tiny, tiny bit longer, just a tiny, just a smidgen. Um, but it's definitely wider. It doesn't have a, a kind of main weapon now per se, and that's where the Land Raider is now losing it to the Executioner. Um, you know, one, the Executioner can transport, not this, is one, the Executioner can now transport uh, quite a 
an increase in variety of uh, units, um, such as the eradicators and assault intercessors. You know, the Land Raider used to be the go-to um, transport uh, choice because um, of the sheer variety it can transport, such as Centurions and Terminators, uh, as well as all the other um, assault variants. Uh, but now the Executioner is, uh, yes, it can only carry four less, but like I said before, that's still 12 wounds, um, as opposed to 10 wounds for normal Space Marines or, you know, 10 wounds for five Terminators. It's been impacted by the variety of troops against Workshop are releasing for the execute for the uh, Primaris now, and it misses out on a, a really decent long range weapon. I mean, uh, these twin these twin link las cannons they used to be you know god hammer pattern lance las cannons they used to be uh, one of the best weapons in the game 48 inches strength nine could pretty much hit anything on the board you could use the machine spirit but now you've got these tanks here which can move 10 inches or move half speed and fire their main weapon twice and this weapon is is a scary scary weapon at 72 inches on a standard size board i can't see why you wouldn't just be moving half the distance and firing that thing twice um, it will cause a lot of damage. Anyway, um, without going into too much uh, tangent on the rules, that's that's it next to the Land Raider. Um, I just want to show you it next to a, a, a Rhino, why not? Everybody knows sort of the size of a Rhino. Um, so yeah, it does dwarf a Rhino uh, on that base as well, and it does make it look a bit odd with the tracks, but uh, it is what it is. Um, that, yeah, it makes it look bigger as well. Um, but the turret has now had, had the effect of making the tank look thinner, whereas the other turret made it look um, quite wide. That's just where we are. Anyway, the final, final size comparison I wanted to make was with a, a big daddy of a, uh, of a transport. No, not the Mastodon. If you want to see a size comparison with the Mastodon, please put it in the comments below. Um, <laughs> but I will just show you it next to one of my Spartans. Um, now this is, is, a, is a whopper of a tank. So this is a super heavy tank, uh, along with the, um, the Typhus and the Cerberus. Uh, it's, it's a super heavy land raider. Um, the door does open and this thing can carry, I think, 20 uh space marines um quite a decent number i love this uh this top turret thing um which is kind of i mean you can still fire it with part of the door you know part of the um entryway open i need to bend that back into place hmm. anyway uh this bad boy has got quad last cannons uh on either side magnetized of course um yeah you could say that the two twin linked uh last cannons on each side and um, so quite high damage output but just that's it you just got the three weapons there um but uh yeah it's it's an absolute monster um yeah, way, way bigger. Um, is it sort of taller? It's not as tall, you know, because of that stand, um, but it's definitely wider, longer, thicker, you name it. Um, but yeah, that's a, a big daddy uh, transport. But the Executioner uh, is not a transport first. It's more of a main battle tank first that happens to have a, you know, a bit of a troop transport capacity. Okay, just a couple more size comparisons I wanted to make. I promise, I promise. Let's just do uh, some normal kind of uh, comparisons right here. Well, let's make it special. Um, this is the new Lieutenant. You've probably never heard of a Primaris Lieutenant before. You've never seen one. They're really quite rare. Um, Games Workshop don't um, produce many of these. So you may want to get your phone out and just record this part of the video just in case they, you know, you, you never see one, uh, you know, out of this video. Um, but uh, there's a Lieutenant out of the new Indomitus uh, box set. Yeah, it makes makes them look smaller having them on these stands. Uh, here are some other Space Marines. Uh, are Primaris now getting bigger? No, they're saying the same size. Thank God for that. Um, but uh, yeah, compared to Sly Marbo, I mean, Crikey, Sly Marbo almost looks like a, I don't really want to say it, but a Gretchen <laughs> next to uh, one of these tanks. And then a normal sort of legacy Space Marine. Um, yeah, 
looks quite small too. Um, but the Primaris go really well and yeah, you kind of expect them to because it's a Primaris tank. Anyway, uh, a bonus um, size comparison I wanted to make, more of a money comparison more than anything, is just with the Sakaran from Forge World, a, uh, a Punisher. What an absolutely awesome, ridiculous looking tank this this bad boy is. Um, just incredible, this thing. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why uh, the price of the Executioner put me off because I think the Sakaran was about 70 odd pounds or so, uh, you know, just a normal one. They're now sitting at, I think, 85 or 87, almost 90 pounds for one of these Sakarans uh, because Forge World have just bumped and bumped their price up over the past three or four years. Um, but still, this is the thing that put me off getting the Executioner because for only a little bit more money, uh, you could get uh, a High, much more highly detailed um, resin miniature uh, from Forge World um, for almost the same price. And, uh, you know, looking at the, the three sprues of the Executioner, um, that just really put me off that they're charging such a high price for just plastic miniatures. Um, now you could look at it that Forge World have increased their prices so much that um, that's not as... Uh, tangible as it was once was but yeah can you imagine going to workshop releasing a 60 pound tank uh you know three years ago let alone four years ago um, pretty much unheard of anyway um i just want to show you the little comparison there and make a point about uh pricing so this is uh, my part of the review where i will go through all of the rules for the repulsor executioner you can find these in your i say brand new space marine codex that came out less than a year ago in september but uh <laughs> because of the new edition and Indomitus and all of the new Primaris releases, uh, Games Workshop will be releasing the new Space Marine Codex in October. So if you're watching this in October, in uh, only a couple of months time, I, I was thinking the other day, crikey, it's only like four months till Christmas. That's Anyway, if you're watching this in October, have a little scout out because there should be a, a new uh, Space Marine Codex in the wild and um, probably will have updated rules for this tank now or uh, change points cost or something anyway it's an odd one because it's a heavy support choice for Primaris and uh, Primaris only have the other two heavy support choices the Eliminator squad and the Hellblaster squad so it's kind of like the first heavy support tank for Primaris uh, of course a Gladiator will easily be a heavy support choice but until that comes out this is the the number one daddy for that and um, so it's a power points cost of a 15 and a points cost of 215. You're gonna to have to buy all of the other extra weapons for it though. Uh, you know, for instance, the heavy laser destroyer is uh, 40 points. Uh, the on heavy onslaught Gatling cannon is 30, so that's another 70. So you're already looking at 285 points before we look at all the little coaxial uh, weapons and things. So it's a pricey one. Um, it, you know, it's gonna be over 300 points uh, match play. What do you get for those points? Well, it's one of these, um, units uh, where its remaining wounds affects the rest of its stat line. Someone the other day, I think, in the comments said, oh, don't, uh, don't all units, aren't all units affected by, by damage, the stat line, like vehicle-wise? No, not really. Uh, the Myfitic Light Hauler is a classic example, and one of the reasons why it's so damn good uh, is because, although it's a little vehicle, um, the amount of damage it takes it doesn't affect its uh, its stat line which is fantastic so there are there are units out there that um, aren't affected by damage anyway this one starts off with 16 wounds and if it's got between 9 and 16 its movement speed is 10 inches ballistic skill 3 plus and 6 attacks between 5 and 8 wounds its movement speed is 5 inches ballistic skill 4 plus and attacks a d6 and then between 1 and 4 wounds its movement speed drops all the way down to 3 inches ballistic skill 5 plus and attacks 1 the rest of its start line reads as follows as weapon skill is 6 plus strength 8 toughness 8 16 wounds leadership 9 and a save of 3 plus i hear a couple of you asking well super how does that compare to a land raider you know your, your normal basic standard land raider um well it's exactly the same strength toughness and number of wounds um except the, where the land raider beats it it's that save it doesn't get a two plus save like the land raider does um which makes land raider much more survivable they make land raiders uh in a different way to these um 
metal boxes. Anyway, um, a Repulsor Executioner is a single model equipped with two Fragstorm grenade launchers, heavy onslaught Gatling cannon, macro plasma incinerator, two storm bolters, twin heavy bolter, twin Icarus iron hail heavy stubber. It also has auto launchers. So it is a moving fortress. Throughout 8th edition and 9th edition, uh, I guess still gonna go through 9th edition, um, we're seeing Games Workshop put as many weapons as possible on uh, units. They first started doing it with the uh, uh, Repulsor itself by putting an obscene number of weapons on, you know, comparing it to keeping it simple and having a, a Predator with like three main weapons or a Land Raider with the three main weapons. Um, then they then they attributed that uh, and upgraded the Knights by having you have a, a Knight Castellan with um, two main heavy weapons, but then three carapace weapons and two um, point defense weapons. They're just adding and adding and adding more, more weapons to things. We'll go through all of the weapons and what they do. So let's pick out the main weapons first of all. Uh, you've got two options, the heavy laser destroyer, which mine is equipped with uh, and can be swapped over to the uh, macroplasma incinerator. So the heavy laser destroyer, it's a range 72 inch weapon. It's heavy two, strength 10, AP minus four and damage D6. When resolving an attack made with this weapon, a damage roll of one or two counts as three instead. That's pretty horrific. Um, so you get a one or a two on that damage and it's just a three. So let's let's face it, you're gonna be damage of three or more with this one. The other weapon, the macro plasma incinerator, you've got a, because it's a plasma weapon, you've got uh, two uh, firing modes. You've got standard and supercharged. Standard, it means that it's a range of 36 inches. Heavy D6, strength eight, AP minus four, and a damage of one. When you can supercharge it, it's a range of 36 inches. Heavy D6, strength nine, AP minus four, and a damage of two. And for each hit roll of one made for attacks with this weapon, the bearer suffers one mortal wound after shooting with this weapon. Up to you whether you think that's worth it for the extra strength and the extra one damage. Um, it does have 16 wounds, so it can take uh, take a, a beating if you wanted to just supercharge that plasma all through the game uh, for a bit of fun. Anyway, the other weapons, the Fragstorm Grenade Launcher, it's a range 18 inch, Assault D6, Strength 4, IP0 and a damage of 1. Uh, the Heavy Onslaught Cannon, you know, the coaxial weapon there, like the minigun, uh, is a range 30 inch, heavy 12, strength 5, AP minus 1, damage 1. That's quite nice. Uh, it's, a, it's a good strength and it has a solid number of shots at a decent range. The Icarus Rocket Pod, uh, oh, which was more of my spare parts. I don't know why I, I didn't use it, but it's a range 24 inch, heavy D3, strength 7, AP minus 1, and a damage of 2. And re when resolving an attack made with this weapon, um, add 1 to the hit roll if the target can fly, otherwise subtract 1 from the hit roll um, you know you you're gonna have uh, two or more shots uh, statistically with that one the iron hail heavy stubber is a better range it's 36 inches it's heavy three shots instead of d3 its strength is lower at four AP minus one and a damage of one uh, you've got the and then you've got the storm bolters they work as usual so a 24 inch rapid fire two strength four AP zero and damage of one then you've got the twin heavy bolter which is that that whole mounted weapon they work as they always have that's range 36 inch heavy six strength five AP minus one and damage one and then the twin Icarus iron hail heavy stubbers um, the 36 inch range heavy six uh, strength four AP minus one and a damage of one and when resolving attack made with this weapon uh, you add one to the hit roll if it can fly otherwise subtract one from the hit roll so might be worth picking those out instead of the rocket pod uh, because they're better range uh, they've got many more shots uh, they just fail with the the strength um, side of things um, but you could use them against um, standard infantry I guess War gear options, the model can be equipped with one heavy laser destroyer instead of one macro plasma incinerator uh, this model can additionally be equipped with one Iron Hail Heavy Stubber. This model can additionally be equipped with one Icarus Rocket Pod. Abilities. You've got Angels of Death. Uh, you've got this new ability, which uh, we've never seen before, called Aquilan Optics. If in your movement phase, this model does not move or moves a distance less than half its move characteristic, it can shoot with its heavy laser destroyer or macroplasma incinerator twice in the following shooting phase. The weapon must target the same unit both times. I don't see any downside with that. that that's amazing. Um, 
unless you unless there's unless you're eradicators or your hell blasters or okay maybe your assault intercessors uh, uh, are on a bit of a time frame they've left the iron on at home or the or the hob on unless their mission is uh, time sensitive i can't see why you wouldn't just move this thing um you know four inches uh, a, a turn and uh, shoot uh, twice with those heavy weapons because they are yeah <laughs> i mean what's better than having a 72 inch strength 10 weapon well one that can fire it twice um, basically at this point the, the vindicator tank is just sitting in the corner sulking the vindicator demolish cannon used to be a thing of nightmares for us um you know the strength 10 massive cannon uh the, the only downside to that was it it could only fire 24 inches however this thing blows it out of the water with with a weapon that's three times the range you get two shots with it you can choose to have four shots with it it's the same strength way better ap and as a minimum uh, damage characteristic, it just, it literally blows the Vindicator out of the water. Even if you use the argument, well, you can get uh, two Vindicators for one Executioner. Okay, yeah, right, let's play one Executioner against, let's put it against three Vindicators and let's see, uh, you know, from 100 inch range, let's see who survives. I mean, Seriously, what is the Vindicator for anymore? It's, it is a cheap, short-range weapon. Whereas this thing for double the points is uh, have so much more potential um, damage output and can hold six uh, sort of supermarines in it. Anyway, moving off of the Aquilan Optics, it's also got the Repulsor Field. Uh, so if any units uh, with this ability are chosen as targets of a charge, you subtract two from, from the charge roll. Hover tank distances uh, always measured to and from this model's hull. Power of the machine spirit. This model does not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. Auto launchers. Instead of shooting in your shooting phase, this model can use its auto launchers uh, until this start of your next shooting phase. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon against this model, subtract one from the hit roll. That's nice. Uh, you know, I don't know whether it's worth for going any shooting though, because what it can shoot with is quite horrific. And finally, explodes. When this model is destroyed, roll 1d6 before any embark mod models disembark and before removing it from play. On a 6, it explodes and each unit within 6 inches suffers d6 mortal wounds. Transport. This model has a transport capacity of 6 chapter Primaris infantry models. Each Mark 10 Gravis model uh, takes up the space of two other models. It cannot transport jump pack models. Keywords Imperium, Adeptus Astartes, Vehicle, Transport, Fly, Repulsor, Repulsor Executioner. Uh, so there you go, um, that's all the rules. A very exhaustive review uh, from me. Um, I think it needed uh, justice um, doing it. I, I've enjoyed reviewing this tank um, much more than an upcoming review of, of another uh, unit uh, that I shall not um, speak of its name. But if you want to find out what that unit is, um, you know, stay tuned to the channel. Is it the best tank in the Space Marine uh, arsenal? Pfft, yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, it's it's the speed of a Land Raider with a ridiculous long range weapon on it. And it can transport Primaris now with the advent of the Eradicators and the Intercessors. If you didn't already believe that Hellblasters were scary enough to put in this thing, you can now put some range 24 Melter uh, armed, Gravis armored Primaris in there as long as, uh, along with some um, close combat specialized uh, intercessors. It also looks way better than a normal repulse as well, you know, with that big turret. And uh, if you leave all the boxes and things on the sides off it, Again, I, I think that that helps its aesthetic uh, too. Its downside obviously is that it can only carry six, but six Primaris is still pretty decent on in the grand scheme of things. And its other downside is it doesn't have, uh, you know, an invulnerable save or a two plus save. But then again, you've got to ask yourself, well, what vehicles do in fact have uh, an invulnerable save? And there is only one, and that is the Impulsor. For that, you're going to have to forgo one of the main weapons or even the orbital comms array or something, um, which is, you know, very uh, useful. So there you go. What do you guys think of uh, the Repulsor Executioner? Similar to the Adeptus Mechanicus uh, Scorpius uh, tank, I actually found it better than I expected. Um, I did have some reservations for both these two um, models last year and the uh, Chaos Knight. And uh, all three of those models 
actually I really enjoyed uh, building and looking at the rules and reading up on and um, so I'm pleased I did eventually get them in the end. Thank you so much for your patience. Uh, I don't normally do that. I normally try and acquire everything I possibly can, all the new stuff um, and bring it to the channel as, as uh, quickly as possible. Uh, like all of the new Primaris and uh, Necron uh, releases, you'll see all of those um, typically on, on the release day. Uh, if, I, if I get them on the release day. I want to say a big thank you to uh, all of you that uh, continue to support the channel, watch the videos and use that Element Games affiliate link. It really does help me out and uh, allows me to continue um, bringing you these reviews, uh, which I thoroughly enjoy making. So thank you. Thanks ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.